Well, this is super exciting. The other day I made a video about using Harpa AI to create text to image prompts to use for use on Stable Fusion or Mid Journey. And then I showed you how to use it on Canva. Well, I was missing the boat a little bit because I didn't realize that ChatGPT actually rolled out its own text to image AI generator. And in my opinion, it blows away what Canva can do. And I'm very excited about this. So let me just show you really quick how it works. What you're looking at right now is an example of a, an AI generated image right directly from the ChatGPT interface on the OpenAI website. And I'm gonna go over there and show you how we do it in a second. So this particular one, I asked Taro, I mean not Haro, I keep doing that, Harpa AI, which is a free Chrome extension. I'll put a link below in the description of the video. It's free right now. They'll be rolling out premium options at some point, I'm sure. I'm not affiliated with them in any way at this time. But I asked it to give me, all I said was under construction website. That's all I said, under construction website. And look what it gave me. It gave me a photorealistic image prompt, an artistic image prompt, a pixel art sculpture digital illustration. So I could use any of these. So let's, I, I only tested the first one. Let's go ahead and test another one. Let's test this digital illustration. So again, all I said was under construction website and it gave me this prompt to use with ChatGPT. So you don't have to use that. You can just type in whatever you want to ChatGPT. But in my experience, I'm finding this gets me better images. In fact, why don't we just compare it? So let's go to the ChatGPT website. If you've never been here before, it's chat dot openai.com. This is ChatGPT Plus, which when I upgraded, it was $20 a month. I actually do not know if that's still the same as of today. I'm not affiliated in any way with ChatGPT directly. I use it for my business and I teach it as part of my business, but we're using ChatGPT 4 Plus. And right here is where I discovered Dolly 3 is in beta. And it's right there to be used. I didn't have to install a plugin. It's just right there to be used, okay? So what you have to do is if you're just sitting in your in the default, you have to go in and check off Dolly 3 to be able to use it, okay? Now let's just try it without the special prompt. Give me an image, let's see, um, that depicts an under construction website. Let's see if the Harpa prompt makes that much of a difference. Now, one thing I am doing is when Dolly creates an image that is a square, I'm asking it to give me a, I'm telling it to give me specific ratios like 16, nine, or you could put, give me a uh, 1280 by 720 so that it's wide. That's just something I'm doing in my blogs because it looks to me like Google Discover and some of the other search engines still prefer the wider like 16-9 ratio. But if you're creating a pin for Pinterest or something for Instagram, then these squared ones will be fine. Okay. So there's an example. Wow. <laughs> those, actually, those actually came out really good. I'm way overexcited about that. Now, sometimes the text on these gets still gets messed up. So look here. We're building something awesome. So it's got a T instead of, you know, something. It's got an extra T. This one under construction looks pretty darn good. So you might be right back without the K. So you might have to spin this a couple times. This is great. This coming soon one looks really good. Now you could say, make these 16, nine. Let me see if I have to put anything else in with that. So now we, what we want it to do now is just give us the images in those in those wide horizontal style that would be appropriate for Twitter or for blogs, that kind of thing. Now, after it generates those, we're actually gonna put in the prompt that Harpa gave us so that we can directly compare what the images look like. Now, again, for me personally, I'm, pr I'm pretty darn excited about these. I, I would definitely use those. Not the ones with the typos. I would spin those back out. You could also say, don't use any text. Or you can try saying things like, put these words on there under construction and spell it out. Okay, this looks good. Look, under construction, that looks good. So now we've got the right 
uh, image aspect, 69. I like it. Oh, and we're building something awesome. Look, that's it fixed its font. So these look great. Be right back. They're all fixed. Love it. I would use all of those. But let's just see how fan our fancy schmancy Harpa gave us. I know it gave us the, what are we doing? The digital. Okay, we're on another page when I started this over here. So let's just paste it in. A website under construction portrayed as a digital illustration. Animated characters are actively constructing the website, laying down the FAQ section, and welding the privacy policy in place. The environment is a dreamy nighttime workspace illuminated by the glow of the website. Let's see what it does. I will tell you that if the prompt says do this in the artistic styling of, and it names an artist, ChatGPT has put a policy in place where it doesn't let us put a description of a certain artist so that we're not, you know, stealing the style of that artist. There's more on that on the on the Dolly website. Well, it's not the, it's not the chat GPT is preventing it as much. I think I believe Dolly has it right in there in their terms, but it could be it could be chat GPT as well. But they're putting that in there so that we can't, you know, basically just take an, a specific artist styling and say we want it to be like that. But we can still describe it. So this one here that's about to to come out is a digital illustration. So it should be something more like we see on Canva with the little cartoon characters that are that are putting it together. Ah, wow, I'm impressed. I'm just darn right impressed. Now here, see how the how the text gets a little funky there as it as it's scrolling on. Doesn't mean I won't use it since the FAQ looks correct. Privacy policy map. But then see, then you get these little weird ones over there. So I may not use those. If it's got a bunch of things on there that doesn't make sense, I might not use those. But I might use other things. And that looks really good. So what I would do now is I just come up here and I click download. And then I'm going to save that to my computer. And I'm going to rename it something like under construction page with FAQ. Because I want it to have the keywords in there. I want it to be unique. So recapping, you go in there and play with this you saw how different the regular images were and then how how different they are when we use the Harpa Assist to create the prompts. Personally, I really like using the Harpa, playing with all those different designs and getting, and, and I'll stick with, if I'm gonna put four or five, six images on the page now, I'll stick with that same type of styling so that it all looks similar as we go, as we go in. I'll just put the next, prompt in there and say, give me another under construction page and let it run me a new prompt. And I'll stay with that digital artwork styling so that they're, they're kind of cohesive on that page. So there you go. That's it for me today. Thanks for joining me.